Hi guys, Jason the Football here. Today I'm going to show you how to make the Poncho Bivy Shelter. This is a great one man shelter using a poncho tarp that you can buy just about anywhere. I wanted to go ahead and show you my kit. This is the kit that I normally carry around with me, throw in my backpack as an emergency shelter system. Um, it is definitely just an emergency shelter system. This is not something I typically will carry around with me. Um, but real quick, open it up, and in the side you have four stakes. Pull them out, and you can see they're kind of short. I ground them down about an inch and a half to two inches shorter than the, uh, the regular ones. Uh, they're still plenty long enough to use for the purposes I need them for. I have the poncho, which We'll unroll and I'll show that to you in a little bit. I have my two pieces of cordage, which apparently oh, there. Two pieces of cordage, which is 10 feet of cordage, and a bug net. Uh, this is just a, I believe it's a four by eight piece of bug netting, and it works perfectly well for this shelter. It'll cover the hole up real nice, and you don't have to worry about mosquitoes. So now let's do a compare on the uh, the tarps. Alright guys, so now I've got the two tarps out. <clears throat> the one here to the left is the Rothko brand tarp. These are the ones you generally find in uh, military surplus stores. They're the ripstop nylon fabric. Um, they are 52 inches across the shoulder stretch and they are 82 inches from the foot, the two foot sides. So long ways they're 82 inches and short ways they're 50 two inches. They are very, very lightweight in comparison to the older military style tarps, but as you're going to see in a minute, they're a little bit smaller. This one, as you can see, takes up a lot more room on the camera, is 64 inches by 84 inches. A um, couple of, of differences between the two of them, and we'll get to it in a minute. Now, this one has ripstop nylon fabric as well but it also has what's called a wet weather coating or a lot of people call it a rubberized coating on the tarp and these are extremely uh, rainproof um, this stuff here it kind of seems like it seeps through condensation and things like that and it will kind of soak it but won't actually permeate um, but there's eight grommets on the military style poncho uh, that's very important because you need the eight grommets in order to build this shelter. Um, the only other factor is it's a lot larger. So you definitely have more head space, space for gear, and it's a little bit longer actually than the Rothko. So back to the Rothko. These only come with six grommets. They come with your, your corner grommets and then they come with your shoulder grommets, which you see there and there. And I actually put this clip in the wrong spot. Um, <clears throat> now I replaced all of the factory grommets with heavier duty grommets because ripstop fabric is actually very strong fabric um, it's just that the grommets that they put in them don't have much of a neck so they come out real easy I actually pulled three grommets out before I decided I'm just going to replace all my grommets when I replaced all of my grommets I also did something else I added a, a grommet to the bottom panel um, so you've got your, your four corner grommets, and then you have your two shoulder grommets. Those are the ones when your button snaps are buttoned in poncho shape. They're on basically your shoulder. They're called your shoulder grommets. And these are called your foot grommets. Now the foot grommets are on, obviously, in where your feet are at, but these Rothko brands don't come with those. Now, I really wanted to, to point out, put a grommet in them. Because finding these military style ponchos are really di difficult these days. They are about from the 80s, I believe, 80s era. And the ones that I have found, because this one has a couple of small holes in it, the ones I have found are about 50 bucks. They're rather pricey to purchase one of those. Or you can go and get one of these cheaper brand uh, tarps, poncho, poncho tarps. They are lighter weight. Um, they're a little bit smaller, but they're lighter weight, and they're cheaper. They're about $15 to $20. You can get them online for about $14. Bucks. Um, 
and go out and buy buy some grommets. Grommets come in handy for so many things. Um, but go out and buy some grommets. Now, if you don't want to buy grommets, you can go ahead and get one of these gator clips, like I was talking about. And right here is one of the grommets I had to replace. You just instead of buying a grommet and putting it in, you just buy one of these gator clips and you know slide that gator clip up and crimp down. This this tarp will work just as good if you do that as it would with a grommet. So that's just a real quick comparison between the two of them to uh, give you an idea of how big of a difference there is between the two of them but to show you just how well both of them work in a real world situation. Okay, now I'm going to build a Poncho Bivy shelter. This is the shoulder grommet. Now what I'm doing is I'm attaching it to the corner grommet. Making a floor.
actually going to use this improvised grommet. Okay, now let's take a look at them real quick. Alright, so first thing you want to do is obviously attach it to the tree so you can start pulling tension. And you're going to go to an opposing corner. The farthest corner away from the corner tied to the tree, let's take it to the ground. Then you're going to go to one of your two sides, bring it down, let's take it to the ground. Go on the other side here, stake it to the ground. And then you want to work on your floor. Floor! Get in here and hopefully it'll clear up some, which it won't. The floor is basically just that extra side of the tarp. You drag out and stake to the ground, and you can't really see that real good, and I'm sorry about that, but unfortunately, I can't put it on macro mode while it's running. So, um, last thing that you do is you stake up your A-frame. You can use sticks or something else. On mine, I put a ball of grass in here in the head, and then I have some uh, button snap or button slides on my handles. So I just throw my handle um, lanyard cords over top of that, and then slide the button slides up, and that's what attaches my head. Makes it quick, makes it very efficient. It's a very um, tight system. It would definitely let water run off of it. This larger one I actually camped in once or twice in that way and it works rather well. Now the smaller one is definitely lower to the ground um, for one and two it's not as wide across the shoulder area but it, it's still almost as long to the to the end here so it works rather well for that. Um, on this one I'm using uh, two arrows to hold up my A-frame, just like I would use sticks in the, the real world. Um, obviously, rain would get into that hole, so that wouldn't work super well while doing it. Um, but on this one, I just, at the head, I just rolled everything up inside <clears throat> of the hood. 
and then tied it off using a girth hitch and then tied off like a, a quick release knot and that just it makes it a, a knot for me to be able to yank out when I'm done without having to worry about any kind of major knotting and it gives me a knot to stop my A-frame from going up any further. Up here at the head I have a quick release knot uh, going through a trucker's hitch. The trucker's hitch is a figure eight on a bite which I like to use figure eight knots because they come out a lot easier than regular overhand knots. So that's what I did there. Both of these are built basically the same. And I'm going to set this camera back up and kind of climb up in there into each one of these and give you an idea of how much room. Well, you're not going to see real well how much room they have, but it'll show you that I'll fit inside of there. So when you're getting in these, one side is going to be longer to your stake than the other side. So that's going to be the end that you slide into. So you would basically just get down and you can make these a little bit higher off the ground if you wanted to. I normally make mine real low in order to keep the, the wind blown rain and the, uh, the wind from really coming inside of these systems. I don't know if you can see me or not, but I am all the way back to the tail end and I've got about six inches of floor above my head. So there's an extra six inches behind my head that I could scoot up or slide down if I wanted to. And here's my hand stretched all the way out as far as it'll go. Um, if I was up here a little closer where you could see me, on this side here I have a few more feet that I could put like my gear and stuff in and it would be out of immediate rain it might get blown rain on it but it'd be out of the immediate rain so as you can see it's definitely spacious enough to spend a night inside of here and also put a good amount of gear depending on how much gear you take with you climbing out you just slide straight out before the smaller one's a little bit tighter uh, space it doesn't really have the room to put your gear in like a backpack or something but it's large enough for you at least to get out of the rain and it'll give you a pretty well uh, pretty good covering from the rain and from the cold elements so that's uh the way that the smaller one fits now clearly there's not a whole lot of space inside the smaller one but you can fit in it now real quick i'm going to throw this mosquito netting over it to give you an idea of how that would cover all this you basically would just throw it over your top here. Bring some of it around this way. And then you would have a door. So, that is the poncho bivy shelter. Using both types of poncho tarps that you can uh, purchase nowadays. So, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you give it a try. It's definitely a great backup. Like I stated before, I can fit everything except for my walking sticks in this small bag and throw it in my car, throw it in my backpack, take it anywhere, and I've got an emergency shelter if I need one. And an emergency shelter that is much better than an A-frame shelter. So, Jason the Phone Boy, and I'm out.